How's it going, everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming. Thank you so much for joining me in the next episode of Let's Make a Game for the 2018 series, where we use the RPG Maker MV engine to make a sim RPG, which we're calling Natural Explorers. We've had several comments over the last episode. Let's take a look at some of them real quick. Brandon J chimes in and requests that we add a toggle switch for the gather notifications. And there was another comment about this as well. But we're going to do something like this that will toggle the gab window and let the player switch that on or off at will. At some point in the near future, we'll make it so that the players can toggle the sound effects and the notifications to their desire. PC games need to have a lot of options. I think PC users require that they have the ability to configure their game to their liking. So if they don't want to hear burping noises, they should be able to toggle that out. If they don't want to have notifications popping up five times a second, they should be able to toggle that out. And we're going to allow that. Sheepsickle joins in and says, set up a system that lets villagers randomly join towns, we could do something like that. Also request that we add a system that lets the player hire temporary mercenaries. He May Works had a plugin that lets you instance actors. I don't know if we're going to be using that. Maybe we'll custom design a few temporary mercenaries. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Devin Scott chimes in and suggests that we add a village quest board when we add a quest system. He also says we should add trade routes between villages. Well, we would need a second village to do this. When we set up another village, we can put that system into play. Blue Rabbit adds a few new interesting ideas about adding a bank system to store gold and remove gold on death. I don't want to punish the player for dying too much. I think on the instance of death, since there's not going to be random battles, they will be scripted battles at all points. I'll be able to control what happens when the player dies. I think the player will just be booted out of the random dungeon in that instance, and there will be some penalty. I don't think I'm going to take all the player's gold. Definitely needs to be some kind of penalty, right? I don't want to make the game super hard, but I do want to de-incentivize the player from dying. Like like using it as an escape method. Reward monster parts for adventure guild quests. When we set up guild quests, I don't see why not using monster parts. Make the combat system humorous. I was thinking of something about, since we have reputation as our magic defense stat, we can create skills like insults and have the player be insulted. That'll lower their reputation temporarily. Something of that matter. I don't know how funny I can be, but we'll try to add some sort of humorous combat system or at least inject some humor into the skills. I'll start at the top and scroll down now so that you can see all of the changes that have been made in the idea comments. If you'd like to pause, I update them by the name. They're not chronologically listed. When somebody chimes in, if their name has already been listed, then I'll just add it. So there you go. All right, let's save our idea comments and jump into the project. I updated the image art. Somebody said that it looked a little weird because Natural Explorers isn't centered, but I tried the way that it looks when you center the text. It looks funny when you center the text. I positioned this text very specifically because of how it lines up with the picture. I have the sun in the background here in between the EXPL. It fits snug right here. Also, there's something satisfying to me about this area right here where my mouse is. I can't explain why I want the font here not centered, but this is where I'm going to leave it. I'm sorry if it looks weird to you. I made my logo on this image more opaque. Got rid of the filters on it so that it's not as loud. All right, let's jump into the game real quick. I've incorporated two action sequences. The default attack has an action sequence that brings the player across the screen. You can find this action sequence publicly available on RPG Maker Web Forums. It's also on my website. You can see when we attack, the player moves across the screen, and so do the enemies, unless it's a missile weapon, in which case they don't jump across the screen. I added the ice beam action sequence from Dungeons of Driftwood, but I changed it up quite a bit. I created a custom sound effect for that charge and created that sound effect as well. I put in a couple of plugins in between episodes. We'll look at the plugin manager next. But there's our action sequence, Radiant Beam. So Searing Slash was changed to Radiant Beam because Searing Slash to me sounded like a physical attack that would hit one thing. It would be like a fire element type thing. If I change it to Radiant Beam, which this fits a little bit better, I feel. Within the next episode or two, I want to start designing the random dungeon generation. All I've added was a show text here. You see some faint writing on the stone tablet, but you cannot make anything out. Maybe at some point the player activates a switch and that turns on this event so that we can start generating random dungeons. The player will set up their settings, go down into the dungeon. And that dungeon will be different depending on the settings they chose. Looking at the action sequence for the basic attack, it's using Anfly's action sequence packs. Doing this right here, I'm going to scroll very slowly 
slowly if you want to pause and see what we got going on right here. This, you can copy paste this code. It's available in multiple places. For Radiant Beam, this is an action sequence that I designed. I believe I made a video for it. I'll find the link to the video for this action sequence so I don't have to go over it too much. I did change it up a little bit for this game, but I've made this in a different game. I've changed the animations, obviously, to fit into this project. I'm using a common event inside of this. The action sequence calls for common event 22. And on common event 22, I'm using a plugin command from my place animation plugin. So this plugin command places this animation number at this resolution of the game, waits five frames, and repeats the process. This is what causes the projectile, the ice beam projectile, to fly across the screen, blinding flash of light going across the screen to hit all enemies. I created a new animation. This is a charge up animation that I added a new sound effect for. I literally went with my voice and then I added some filters and lowered the pitch and put some reverb and normalized it and whatnot. And then I took a different pattern from, I forgot what skill it was. But then I put a different image and I copy pasted some frames and moved frames around so that it would disappear and come back in. Added a flash sound effect and that's how I got the charge up animation. This was another one that I literally did the same thing with a different pattern. I also changed the formula on Radiant Beam from attack to magic attack. So it's based on the character's intelligence, not their strength. I added two new armors, the quick boots and the scholar's hat. The quick boots are going to have the stats and everything that you see here. The feathered cap, I think we made that already. I don't know if we made that already. But anyway, I made the feathered cap, the quick boots, and the scholar hat. Well, these are the new armor from the last episode. I'm making the price on them quite expensive. I've changed the price of the white shirt from 1000 to 2000 and I've made the caps 2000 and this relic 5000 I want the player to have to make a large investment in their gear. They can only have one weapon in their hands, one headgear, one body armor, and a relic. So they've only got a limited number of spaces. It won't be too hard to find something in those spaces, but I don't want to flood the player with with a bunch of crappy items. So I'm gonna have a limited number of items, but all of them will be kind of expensive. The player has to really work to get character upgrades and to become stronger in battle. I've made the feathered cap award very little actual defense, but give reputation. I've removed the magic defense aspect and renamed defense to become endurance, which is going to work against attacks and magic attacks. I've used the magic defense for a new stat called reputation, and reputation is going to determine several things. It may determine prices when you deal with certain PCs. It may be a requirement to marry a certain other. I also want to play with the idea of letting the character decide if they're male or female. At some point, we may create another actor, start the player male or female based on their preference, and then also let them marry male or female based on their preference, and maybe even have kids to expand the party that way. So in order to get more permanent members that you don't have to pay for as mercenaries, you can marry someone and have kids with that person that will expand the number of actors that you control. This idea is influenced from games like The Guild. The common events are the same so far and since yesterday, and that's the updates since yesterday. What I would like to do is find some way to award the player the new weapons and armors, or potentially set up some sort of system where they can have these items crafted. We're not at the point to where I can build the armorers building yet, because we still have to set up a way to make pickaxes, we have to refine into ingots, so there's lots of other common events. And I'm also looking at adding Yanfly's self switches and self variables plugin to have all the timers be more local, but we'll see how that works in the future. It might be more optimal to use that plugin. As I've stated in previous episodes, it's a natural process to rewrite and redesign your system several times before you reach your final version. Right now, the enemies only have a basic attack, which is awful. You don't want your enemies to have just default attack. So I'm going to design a new skill or two or three for the haunting memory right now. I'm going to add a new type of damage. This is going to be called emotional. You can deal emotional damage to your target. I'm actually going to add another one while we're here called thermal. Instead of fire, it's just gonna be like heat type damage. We'll pick a couple of icons, one for emotional element and one for thermal element. I'm going to use the mirror for emotional damage element, which is icon 222. Two. 
I want to give all of the element types their own color. In order to do that, I want to look at our, our window.png. And if I look at this window.png, the numbers are as follows. It starts with zero, and then it reads from left to right, top to bottom, just like you'd read a sentence in English. So this is zero, one, two, three, four. If I look at this, I can clearly see what number I want to use for the color associated. Now I have to decide for emotional damage, what color are we going to use? I think I'll use this orange here. One, two, three, four. And we're gonna use color code 20. To reference, to change the color in a description or text, you type slash C if you're using the message core from Yanfly, and in brackets, you'll put the number of the color you want to use. How this works is once you put in the color code, everything after that color code will be that color. And to return to its normal color, you'll type slash C and you can put an array of zero, or you can just leave it blank and it'll default to zero. So you can just do slash C afterwards. Reputation as the stat for faint echoes, which is dealing the emotional type damage. That is the renamed magic defense. And I'll use the target's reputation as the damage deduction. We'll make it cost 20 TP and we'll create a custom animation for it. I'm going to delete all the flashes and just take the animation. Let's actually create another sound effect for it. <laughs> it needs to be a little bit faster to fit the animation. <laughs> Just a little bit faster will probably make it fit better. That'll work perfect. Alright, let's see if we can do another one very quickly. Also speech? Yeah. Shrek. <laughs> Donkey! No. Call this one Claw. We'll make this sort of like the default attack. We'll replace the attack with Claw. Actually, we're going to have it generate TP. This is going to generate. 20 TP by using it, or 15. Cajun battle screen, one enemy, HP damage, this will be physical damage. Let's give it a quick animation. And one more move to use the TP. So we've got one that uses MP, one that generates TP, and now we'll need a more advanced move that, probably a little bit stronger, actually costs TP. I guess it's unleashing pent-up frustration, so it's also going to be emotional damage. <laughs> and it's going to be attack times three plus reputation. Wait, I have an interesting idea. It's going to be attack times six minus the user's own intelligence. The smarter they are, the less it's going to do. The more attack they have, the stronger with strength, the more damage. If you have an intelligence buff, if you throw an intelligence buff on your enemy, then it'll cause this move to do less damage. I don't know how effective this is going to be, but I like the idea of it, so I'm going to use it. And we're going to use the player's endurance or defense as another deductor in the damage. We'll let it critical. We'll give it a wider variance. And now the animation. Is 
turn this under. I don't want to make my own sound effect again. It's an addiction at this point. Why you I own up? Why you I own up? I know how we own. <laughs> okay, they said make it more humorous. <laughs> Reversing that did the did the trick. Okay. I know how we own. I know how we own. I don't even know what this audio is. I don't. IDK audio. O one. We'll replace Earth one with the IDK audio that I just made. I know how we own. I don't know how you. How do I know? <laughs> I don't know how you. You're making this Yeah, over. I don't want any extra flashes and no screen flash. We'll get rid of the explosion to be more of an attack, or even a scratch. <laughs> That's very weird. Now let me let me change the image again. I don't know how you. That works better. I don't know how you. I think there's a frame issue somewhere. 20 frames. Now on 13, we need the additional attacks. I don't know. I think we're Three. I don't know how you. Yeah, I like that. That's better. Okay, we're gonna go with that. His own rabble. It only costs 50 TP. We'll give it that animation. Claw its custom claw animation. Faint echoes. I called it haunting echoes. Let me, for consistency, rename it. I'm going to add those skills to the haunting memory. It gets claw with a rating of five. It gets unravel with a rating of five. Because remember, this takes 50 TP to use, so it won't really use it unless it has the TP to use it. But we'll make the other skill, faint echoes, a rating of four. So it will only only be able to do this three times in its life going to cost 30 MP to cast it most likely it'll die actually we'll give him 20 we will only be able to use it twice now we need to test the enemy to see how the enemy fares and if he's too hard or too easy at this point all right I'm going to guard this turn let the enemies do stuff claw okay we can add action sequencing to that Nice! I'm going to use my first aid and let them go again. I want to get rid of the charge up animation. I don't think that needs to be there. The variance on the echo move is very... Strong. Claw seems to be about right. It's a simple... Move. Here's another. <laughs> I love it. Guys, that's going to be the end of this episode. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to remove the charge up animations as the last thing I do in this video. Hopefully you guys like this content. If you do, remember to smash that like button. I really appreciate every one of you for doing that. In order to remove those charge up animations, all you have to do is go into your battle engine core and find the animation section and change the numbers here. So I'm gonna spend some time picking good animations for here, making them very short. Maybe remove them if I don't want them on every move because they become redundant after a while. So I might, I might make some custom animations, five frame charge ups that really quick and tight. That's going to do it for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, please give this video a thumbs up, like, favorite, share, subscribe to the channel if you're new here, or if you've been here for a long time and haven't subbed, please sub to my channel. If you would like to support what I do, please consider backing me on patreon.com slash driftwoodgaming. That would be very appreciated. If you want to come hang out on the Discord channel, we have a link in the description below. Come hang out and chat with us, talk with us. We'd love to have you to show off what you've done. You can come and self-promo your stuff so you can get some more exposure, or if you want to see what other people have been working on, you can come and hang out in the Discord. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to stay awesome. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.